okay so so the motivation for this is um, you know Well, there are a couple of motivations. I'll just um, right. So we know that you know, except for the half a dozen problems you learn in the algorithms course, sorting, searching, shortest paths, max flow, min cut, everything else in the world is pretty much NP hard. Okay. Um, so you need, but you know, they they all model real world problem need to be solved and you know you know what that NP hard means that you do not expect an algorithm that will solve all instances of the problem in time polynomial in the input size ok. But they need to be solved because they are real world problems so what do we do. So there have been a lot of approaches since we know about this notion of NP hardness in the last 30 40 years um, a fairly successful approach I would say is approximation algorithms where you look at the optimization problems relax the requirement that you really want the optimum solution but something close to the optimum you settle for but you want to solve it in polynomial time. So the challenge here is to figure out how close to the optimum your algorithm produces given the fact that you do not know the optimum ok. So you measure the the big uh, goal is to get close to the optimum in polynomial time. The other approach I would say is something like ok. So, on general input you do not expect polynomial time algorithm for this problem as it is NP hard, but if you know something about the problem maybe you can design polynomial time algorithms. For example, if, if you are looking at a graph problem, the graph is bipartite, the graph is caudal, perfect, if it is a forest, there are structures like that where you can design efficient algorithms for problems which are otherwise hard in the general instance, ok. And the other approach which um, is that maybe I do not want to settle for approximation, I do not have any special structure, I do want to solve the real problem exactly. Then the fact that the problem is NP hard means you do not expect polynomial time algorithm, but I, I will like to settle for whatever running time as good as possible maybe 2 power n, maybe 2 power square root of n, maybe n factorial whatever you can. So, exact. So, we do want to solve them exactly. We are willing to settle for exponential algorithms, but in the exponential world also there is no, you know, there is a hierarchy of functions. We want efficient exact exponential algorithms. I might put parameterized complexity as some sort of a smoothening, a bridge between these two where we want to parameterize the special instance, ok. In what sense the instance is special, we will throw in some parameter, we will measure it by some parameter and say if the parameter is small, you have a, an efficient polynomial time algorithm, as the parameter grows, we have a you know bad algorithm, ok. But somehow we want to measure the running time of uh, the complexity of the problem in a multi dimensional way. So far you know classically we have been looking at only input size as a measure, polynomial in the input size, exponential in the input size. Now we want to throw a secondary measurement as Downey and Mike fellows like to call and as the parameter increases you know what is the complexity of the problem. So typically the problem um, we will be looking at a, a parameterized problem. as an input whatever your graph, a string, sequence of numbers whatever and then there is a parameter you specify right and 
there is a question which you ask you know is there something something that exists in the thing and a feasible algorithm in this paradigm is an algorithm with running time. This is a pure polynomial in the input size n. So, this is input size whereas, we isolate how uh, the complexity of the problem depends on the parameter k and so this would typically be an exponential function on k because we will be looking at hard problems ok. So, so the goal is to make this function as small as possible and as if when k is very small you may actually be get a polynomial time algorithm like this as k increases you will reach the other x end of designing some bad exponential algorithm ok. Now, what is the parameter right because input we understand what is the parameter the what makes the whole area rich is that you know you make the choice of parameter whatever you like. We will see examples today and um, um, for the same problem can be hard in the parameterized world with some parameter, but may be easy with some other parameter and an algorithm with this kind of a running time for a parameterized problem is called uh, a fixed parameter tractable algorithm. it is also called FPT and the class of problems parameterized problems having such an algorithm is also called FPT. So, FPT will be an overused word here. So, we talk about a running time as FPT running time, we will talk about an algorithm as an FPT algorithm, we will talk about the complexity class as FPT. So, basically this means that the algorithm has a run time some function of k the parameter plus. Now, it turns out again we will see it today you can write this as f of k times or f of k plus both are equivalent notions and definitions ok. So, let us get to an example problem. So, let us take the classical vertex cover problem. where your input is a graph g undirected graph and you have a parameter no let me not add the parameter at this point. This is I am talking about the classical problem and the question the optimization problem associated with vertex cover is find the subset. So, this has vertex set b and h set E for every edge x y or both ok. So, vertex cover is a subset of vertices that covers all edges. So, given any edge in the graph at least one of the endpoints must be in your solution ok. This is a vertex cover problem have you seen this problem ok. So, you know that the problem is NP hard right you have seen this yeah ok. Ok. So, I mean the optimization problem is you want to find the minimum sized vertex cover for a so, it has a lot of application it is one of the classical NP hard problems, but we know of classes of instances where it is poly time solvable ok. Um, anybody hmm? bipartite graphs is a class of graphs where there is a nice um, algorithm which just finds the maximum matching and from there you can obtain a minimum vertex cover. Um, trees or forests is an example of forests are also bipartite graphs. So, 
as a corollary you have also um, a polynomial time algorithm for this problem. But let me look at so uh, so for bipartite graphs you obtain the polynomial time algorithm by, by finding a maximum matching in the graph and then from the matching you need to do some little bit of work to get your minimum vertex cover. But on trees there is a very easy algorithm. Let us look at that algorithm and because I will use that also for later kernelization. Okay, so vertex cover in trees. So, if you are given a tree to you know how to find the minimum vertex cover in polynomial time. You remember a polynomial time algorithm for this. That anybody who is okay, I'll come to that. Okay, that's something you've seen it. Pratibha, do you remember? Yeah, so that, uh, that is it right? more or less that is all the algorithm is. So, what okay, so here is a very simple heuristic not just on trees for any in, in general graphs for vertex cover if right here is a let me write this as a rule which I am going to use it later. If x is a pendant vertex in the graph I mean graph may or may not have such a vertex pendant vertex means degree 1. So, the graph looks like this right. So, this is x is degree exactly 1, there are more things happening So, this is your graph and I want to find the minimum vertex cover in the graph and this suppose I have a degree 1 vertex then what is the most obvious thing you can do? Hmm? Pick its neighbor right. Why? Because this edge needs to be covered anyway and one of the two guys can cover it. I mean, if your optimum vertex cover contains this, it might contain this, you might as well remove it and pick this and it will continue to be a vertex cover and it will be optimum because its size is the same. Okay. Then pick its neighbor unique neighbor in the optimum solution and this is something you can do all the time okay I mean this requires a proof by the way how would you prove this that this is this is correct like I just said okay so just so basically say um, suppose I know suppose there is an optimum solution which does not contain x it must contain this because who is going to cover this edge. So, remove that vertex and put x and then it turns out it will also be no suppose it does not it must contain this sorry. Um, suppose yeah, there is an optimum sol solution that does not contain this unique neighbor of x then it must contain x. So, remove x and include this what you get is a new set you can prove that that is a vertex cover and it is of the same size. Okay. okay, so this is one another thing this is okay. So, let, I mean because we do want to do this more rigorously now pick its neighbor let us say y delete y and all incident edges on y and work on the remaining graph right. Work on meaning find the minimum vertex cover in the remaining graph. Again why is this justified? Because 
if I write opt of g as the size of the minimum vertex cover in the whole graph and if I have already argued that there is always an optimum solution containing y then this is equal to 1 plus opt of g minus y okay this requires a proof okay. So, it is enough to delete y and look at g minus y and find the minimum vertex cover there why okay why is this correct because clearly opt of g is less than or equal to 1 plus this because I can take x and find the minimum vertex cover in g minus or take y find the minimum vertex cover in g minus y together this set will cover all edges of g and if it actually is strictly less than then you can argue that that set minus y is a smaller solution for g minus y which is a contradiction smaller than opt of g minus y okay. So, many of these things we just take for granted you know internally there is a proof you need to work it out okay. So, so here is something which you can always do in any graph where you want to solve minimum vertex cover the moment you find the mini, uh, vertex of degree 1 pick its neighbor in the solution delete that neighbor you know you can always delete isolated vertices let us say right in the process if you have so at the end of it so now I am uh, I, mean, I haven't come to trees I am talking about general graphs okay if you find a mini degree 1 vertex delete its neighbor delete isolated vertices keep doing this now you can this is a polynomial time step because at every time you are at least deleting at least one vertex so it, the number of time you are going to execute is never more than n phase n is the number of vertices. So now your graph has minimum degree at least 2 because you have gotten rid of degree 0 and degree 1 vertices through the 0 okay. So, the good thing is now on a tree what happens if you keep applying this rule it is empty you are done you are done with finding a minimum vertex cover for tree. So, this is a very simple polynomial time algorithm to find a minimum vertex cover in a tree okay. okay. So, now suppose I tell you the graph is the graph you are given is close to a tree or close to a forest okay this works for in a forest as well because you know you look at every component and, and apply this algorithm you can find the minimum vertex cover in a forest. Now I tell you um, I am going to now my input is some g and I will also give you an s contained in b such that g minus s is a forest ok. So, that means yeah and my parameter is cardinality of s and the question is find the minimum vertex cover. Okay. So, if cardinality of s is small let us say it is k then what I am saying is that this graph is close to a forest in the following sense and there are only k vertices if you remove it the graph becomes a forest. Okay, so, the graph looks like a collection of trees and then there are some k vertices. So, this whole thing is a forest. Okay. Now, so basically wha what I am asking is you, you know how to do it efficiently in a forest do find a minimum vertex cover. Now, if I tell you that it is not very far from a forest can you smoothly extend your algorithm is a question ok. Good.
question clear? So I will also give you this S. Okay. Now later we will also ask the question: How do you even know that there is a set of at most k vertices whose removal makes it to forest? And that's a, a different parameterized problem. But here I am giving you this S. And the problem is to find the minimum vertex curve. Um, first of all, can you expect an algorithm which is polynomial in n and k? I mean, is the problem even NP hard? Can you expect an algorithm which is polynomial in n and k? You remember? Okay, how? What is your S for any possible graph? Yeah, or n minus two vertices, for example. All right. So, so what he is saying is, if you have a polynomial in n and cardinality of S algorithm for this problem, I can use that to solve the vertex cover problem in general graphs because this is as general as it can be if I allow cardinality of S to be arbitrary, right? Because take any graph, maybe leave one edge in the graph and leave everything else, delete the remaining n minus 2 vertices. Then what you have is either an edge or maybe two isolated vertices which is a forest. So S is the n minus 2 vertices. So if you have a polynomial in n and k kind of an algorithm, that will be an overall polynomial time algorithm, polynomial in n to solve the minimum vertex cover which we know is unlikely. Okay. So this is a hard problem. So you need to live with some exponential algorithm. Now I am going to say, okay, it is not too far from a forest, k is small, k is some 20 vertices. Okay. So my graph comes out of some application that it is very close to a forest. There are some 20 vertices that are causing me problem. So now can you make my input to be exponential in that k? Again, yeah. So can I get the kind of algorithm I am looking at f of k plus n to the c kind of an algorithm, right? That algorithm would be pretty useful and feasible because k, if k is small then it is uh, you know, depending on what f of k I have, it is a reasonable algorithm. Okay, so can you think of an algorithm um, for this? Yeah, so let us let us try that, right. So, so my algorithm is, so I am looking for the minimum vertex cover and it is going to intersect S somewhere, maybe even an empty set. So let me guess the intersection. Let Y be the intersection. So for all Y contained in S and I can enumerate all this because S is of small size. So, number of subsets of S is some 2 power k which is fine, which is within my goal of the running time. So, for every y contained in S, I am going to include y in the vertex cover. So, that is my guess of the solution I am looking for, it is intersection with S. Okay. So, I, I guess my intersection. Okay, so it's like for y contained in S. So what do I say? What's hmm. so I guess my intersection and then yes. So if the induced subgraph on S minus y is not independent. then you know exit the loop go to the next guess because I said my the solution I am looking for intersects with S only here, right. But if you have an edge here, who is going to cover that, right. Because I have decided this is all my intersection is, I am not going to allow to pick this. So that means that this guess is wrong. So I exit the loop and move to the next guess, right. 
and suppose it is independent okay so i made that these guys are in my vertex cover now this is independent okay now there may there, there may be edges so anything incident on these set of vertices are already covered so i can delete this now what about the neighbors of vertices here i need to choose all the neighbors because who is going to cover these edges you decided you are not going to pick this so you have to pick the other endpoint so else um Okay, T is the solution I am looking for. Okay, else T, the solution I am going to include Y, which I have already picked, union neighborhood of S minus Y intersection V minus S, right? The neighborhood of S minus Y in this portion. I have to pick all of them and my g prime equal to g minus t right because I have already picked these vertices and whatever the neighbors I pick them and because of this kind of an argument whatever I have picked I can delete them and work find the minimum in the remaining graph. But what do I know about the remaining graph? It is a forest because it is purely a sub induced subgraph of this. So, and um, so T prime equal to T union opt of G prime, which I can find in polynomial time. So, I have got a vertex cover of G whose intersection with S is Y, right? The minimum vertex cover of G whose intersection with S is Y is what I have picked. Now, try this pick the one with minimum T prime cardinality, okay. And how much, uh, what is the running time of this algorithm? Well, whatever is happening here is a polynomial time computation because I am just checking for independence, I'm deleting some vertices and finding the optimum in a forest which we know we can do it in polynomial time. So, all of this is a polynomial time computation which I am doing it for how many times, how many times the for loop is executed some 2 power k steps. So, it is overall running time would be. So, the correctness is obvious because you know you pick any optimum solution and look at its intersection with S, whatever that is, I would have explored that in this for loop, okay. So, the overall running time is some 2 power k times into the C. Okay, questions? And notice that we really did not use the fact that this thing is a forest. What did we really use? Hmm? Yes. So, what, what I mean, I am trying to write a general theorem now. What, what is this that we used? That is all, right. We know how to compute opt in polynomial time. Hey, whether it is a forest, well, we can compute opt in polynomial time in many classes of graphs, in bipartite graph, in caudal graphs, perfect graphs, right. So, let pi be a class of graphs. Okay, I need something about this class of graphs, which I will leave it here, come back, where vertex cover is only time solvable. Then V z can be solved in 
2 power k into the O one time in Okay, so this is a notation I am going to use g plus k v graphs where g is in point um, k v v stands for vertices that graphs which have some subset of vertices whose deletion puts it in pi okay and of course there is another thing you also need this modulator okay given s contained in v cardinality of s is less than or equal to k such that let us call this g prime minus s is in pi. So, as a corollary you, you have, so this is what I mean by some sort of a smoothening between special instances and general instances, right, because any graph is some k vertices away from a forest, from a bipartite graph, from a caudal graph and so on um, for some k. So, as k is small then you have a reasonable running time and it smoothly grows to 2 power n maybe if k is really big. Okay, what else do I need here? So, one thing we used is that opt in this class can be solvable in polynomial time. I also need one more thing, some subtle thing is that what do I need? In you? Exactly, the G prime g prime is g minus some deleted vertices the g prime is also in that class right and such class of graphs called hereditary which basically means closed under induced subgraphs that if a graph is there in this class every induced subgraph of the graph is also in this class so that means g prime which is an induced subgraph of g is also sitting in the class so that it can apply the opt algorithm for that class okay because g prime goes out of pi then you cannot do this Okay, good. Um, so, this is one sort of a parameterization. So, what was the parameter here? The parameter is in some sense the distance of the graph to a forest or a caudal graph or a bipartite graph, right. So, this distance is a parameter here. Now, as I, as I initially said, the parameter can be anything, right. So, now you can ask how do I get this modulator, this s, right, given an arbitrary graph, I, I want to know does it have some k vertices whose removal makes it a forest. That is again a classical uh, NP hard problem, feedback vertex set problem. In undirected graphs, the feedback vertex set is a subset of vertices whose removal kills all cycles, okay. That is also a classical NP hard problem. And okay, so so input g, my parameter is k, and the question is, does there exist as s contained in B such that g minus s is a forest? So, this is called this S is the feedback vertex set. So, what would be a, a brute force algorithm for this? 
of oh where is what is k playing a role yeah all subsets of size at most k right so that's like an n choose k n power k algorithm that does not fit into the this kind of a type okay um so we will design an fpt algorithm for this problem maybe later in the course okay so it's slightly involved you need some new techniques machineries to develop this uh, fpt algorithm so that means you know n to the k is obvious and we want so this the whole most of the time the challenge here is to get the k out of the exponent of n okay in fact for for this problem even n to the k is not that obvious right if you think about it um here at least try all possible because it is a problem where you are looking for a subset of size k at most k okay but what we will do is um we will today look at for what is cover i e g minus s is not even more restricted than forest which is it's edgeless okay so let's so let's look at the special question i mean this question does does the graph have a vertex cover of size at most k where k is my parameter okay so it's a solution size parameter in fact uh, much of the early work on parameterized complexity the parameter was the output size the solution size okay whereas i find this a more natural parameterization and then this is getting attention more recently now where you you look at some structure of the input size as you know some size of some structure in the input as a parameter okay so this is in you know, afar it is from an easy class this is a more natural parameter but this is uh, also an interesting parameter that's what much of the early work studied okay so let's look at um how to design an algorithm of this type for the vertex cover problem okay where the parameter is the solution size so let's um go back to our pre processing rule we saw right that we so this is a general graph not forest anymore because in forest we can solve it in polynomial time anyway and we know how to get rid of degree 1 vertices degree 0 vertices let's continue that and see what we can get so we had rule 0 remove degree 0 what is this pick unique neighbor of any pendant vertex and remove it okay now i want to come up with the rule to handle degree 2 vertices So suppose you have a vertex x which has degree two. Okay, and there are more things happening. Okay, so what's the idea? So we want to somehow do this pre-processing and reduce the input size. Okay, but. can you in general do this at all right suppose i have a general graph can i reduce the input size 
by doing some kind of a rule, a generic rule all the time um, for an NP hard problem in polynomial time. Yes, no? Why not? Oh, exactly. So, if I can even reduce by one bit always, uh, you know, the size of the input of for an NP hard problem in polynomial time, you know, then I what stops me from applying it on the reduced instance and in polynomial time I will be able to solve the problem, okay. So, however, the parameter brings in an interesting, so I mean somehow people always do pre-processing, you know, in practitioners, but there is no theoretical way of analyzing pre-processing because of this problem that we are looking at a hard problem, you cannot reduce it all the time even by one bit in polynomial time anyway. But somehow the parameter brings in a nice way of capturing pre-processing rule. So, what we, what is our goal? Our goal is to reduce my input size to a function of k. Remember, we are always looking at a parameterized problem. So, by applying these rules, we want to reduce the input, get an equivalent instance, always we are working at equivalent instance, where we want to solve the same problem in a reduced instance. But the, suppose if I manage to reduce the size of the instance to a function of k, then we are done, right, to design an algorithm of this type. Why are we done? Yeah, so, so what I am saying is I have an input x k, right, x is my graph and k is the parameter. What I want to do, I am, I am going to spend some poly time and get some x prime k prime, which is an equivalent instance, but with the extra property that my x prime is some function of k, okay. So, that means I have reduced my graph to original instance to a graph on some k power 5 vertices and edges, right. At this point, now apply your brute force n choose k algorithm. n has gone away anyway, n is some function of k. So, that is it becomes another function of k, g of k. So, it will be like a, a function of k plus a poly time of this type, okay. So, my goal is to reduce to I mean, this pre-processing is any way useful, you might as well do it, we will do it. And the way we will analyze it properly and the goal is to reduce the input to a function of, for in, input size to a function of k, okay. Yeah, but let us see how I might, I mean, this, is, this these rules are not actually, we will see that not required towards achieving this goal, but these rules are required later. So, let me go through them anyway. So, if I have a degree 2 vertex like this, suppose y and z are adjacent. Now, can you suggest a rule? What can I do? Hmm? Take y and z into the solution, right? Because if you look at this, these three edges, just these three edges alone, to cover them you need two vertices and that two vertices is out of these three vertices. I mean, you might as well pick y and z, it is a better choice, it is like the degree 1 rule. So, you might as well pick this and delete x, pick y and z into the solution and recurs, okay. So, if, if y and z are adjacent, pick y, z in the solution delete them, okay. So, this is a rule, right. So, if you are looking for a k sized vertex cover, then you will update your k to k minus 2, you know. For the degree 1 rule, you will update your k to k minus 1, because now in the new graph, you are looking for a vertex cover of size k minus 1 here and here you are looking for a vertex cover of size k minus 2, yeah. Once you delete y and z, x 
isolate. So the way you apply it is you, after you apply this, you go back and see whether any of these rules are applicable and apply them. So x will be deleted because it will be become a z degree 0 vertex, it will go away anyways. And in that process, somebody else may become a degree 1 vertex and you will apply this rule and delete them. Not adjacent. Then it turns out the following rule works. So what you have is x, y, z and there are more things going out. Then what we are going to do is, you know, contract this whole thing into a single vertex, let us call it some y, z and make this vertex adjacent to all vertices, you know, the neighbors of this will be a neighbor of y or z, okay. So, you can think of it as y and z merged. So, this is my g and this is my g prime and the k I am going to replace it by k minus 1 and the claim is, okay, this is how you prove correctness of these rules, right. So, g has a k-sized vertex cover if and only if g prime has a k minus 1 sized vertex cover. Okay, so it's, um, can you see the proof of this? Okay, maybe I'll leave the proof for the next exercise. We can get back to it next time. Um, so, what is the idea? So, if the k-sized vertex cover here contains both y and z, then here what do you do? You pick this merged vertex, and and the remaining things will remain here, and you will get, you know, instead of two, you're only picking one. So, k becomes k minus one. If it contained only one of them, let us say it contained y, but not z, then it should contain x, right, to cover this edge. So, you might as well push x, instead of x you pick, put, pick z and then you are back to the other case, okay. If it contained exactly one of y and z, then it must have also picked x. So, instead of x, I just go ahead and pick the other guy, then it is back to the previous case and we are done. So, if it picked neither, then it must have picked x. So, instead now you go ahead and, oh you do not need to pick this at all because, see it picked, suppose the word k size vertex cover picked x and none of these two, then I claim that you do not need to pick this because the all the neighbors of these guys would have been in the vertex cover anyway, okay. So, this is how you argue and so, to fill this up, oh and converse works in a symmetric way. So, depending on whether it is yz is picked or not, you will pick the appropriate one. So, this is another way to handle degree 2 vertices. Now, you, you have an arbitrary graph, you can just by in polynomial time to solve vertex cover 
I can make sure that the minimum degree is at least 3, 0, 1, 2 I can handle it this way by repeatedly applying these rules, ok. Yeah. So, now can I also have a rule for degree through 3 and how far does this go? If y z is not picked then you pick x, then you pick x here, if y, if y z is picked then yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, so can I have a way to deal with degree 3 as well, the answer is no because, because, hmm? no because vertex curve on cubic graphs is NP complete. <laughs> because you can't you know you can't get rid of degree 3 what is in polynomial time if you do then you will be able to solve vertex cover and cubic graphs in polynomial time at least this process but you can have some way of getting rid of some degree 3 rules depending on the neighborhood and and so on and so forth okay but not completely you can't make minimum degree 4 in polynomial time okay so we, we can keep doing this now remember my goal is to make the resulting graph the size a function of k, then I am done, I, then I am done with obtaining an algorithm of the type FPT algorithm, right. So these rules are not, they are very useful anyway later on when we talk about branching algorithms, but for, for the kind of goal I have these are not required, but here is the following is an interesting useful rule. If x has degree greater than k, re recall I am not, I am not solving minimum vertex cover problem now, right. We are not trying, what are we trying to find? We are trying to check does g have a vertex cover of size at most k. So, we want to use k in interesting ways, ok. So, suppose I have a vertex whose degree is great, I am trying to build a vertex cover of size at most k. Now, if I find a vertex whose degree is more than k, what can you say? Hmm? You have to put it in a solution if there is a chance of obtaining a k size vertex cover at all because if you do not put that into the solution, you have to pick all its neighbors, there are too many of them, ok. So, And once you put something in solution, we have already seen that you can delete that vertex and k becomes k minus 1, ok. So, if I repeatedly apply these until no longer possible, what do I have? So, I have done this. So, essentially you do not even need the intermediate thing, you apply this and this right rule 0 and 3 you know apply until no longer possible oh by the way if so i keep putting x in the solution and if i manage to pick more than k of them it's a no instance you can stop and say you know Right. In other words, if k has become less than 0 and if you still have edges to cover, then you can say no instance, ok. So, uh, then ok. So, you have not said no and you have got a g prime. So, what is the property of g prime? The resulting graph. So, now you have a g prime and k prime, right. So, you keep applying this rule and you have a new graph, you know, you have not said no you have a new graph where I want to find a vertex cover of size k prime, k prime is less than k because I have already picked some vertices into the solution. What can you, what is the property of g prime? Max degree is at most k, right. So, max degree and there are no isolated vertices because rule 0 would have applied. Okay, so now I'm going to say rule four. If 
number of edges in g prime is more than k times k prime then what can you say why yes so each vertex can cover at most k edges because their degree is k we are trying to cover all edges remember so each vertex can cover at most k edges and your your budget is k prime so k prime vertices can cover at most k prime into k edges so if the number of edges is more than k prime k times k prime you say no okay now we are done what is what do you mean by we are done we have bounded size of g prime right because my goal is not to really solve the problem but to reduce to get an equivalent instance whose size is a function of k and my equivalent instance is g prime and how many edges are there at most k into k prime k prime is less than or equal to k so it's at most k square at most k square edges no isolated vertices so how many vertices can there be maybe like 2k square vertices it can be like a matching or something right so in fact if you have done even degree 1 rule you can even say the number of vertices is even less but the point so return g prime k prime and number of vertices and number of edges is for now i'm going to say order k square you can still apply what yeah 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 so when i so when i say apply until no longer possible keep on applying because yeah 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 i have updated k every time to so th this k is the new k okay yeah i've been loose about this notation but yeah yeah you have to update this max degree is whatever the new okay so this is called a kernel okay so um so we started with some we want to solve this vertex cover and we got g prime k prime where cardinality of g prime is order k square and all this in poly time and so this is called a kernel for vertex cover okay so in general um a kernelization algorithm takes input a param for a parameterized problem and obtains in poly time an equivalent instance x prime k prime where cardinality of x prime is some function of k in fact both cardinality of x prime and k prime is some function of k yeah so that's it that's a kernelization algorithm okay so equivalent means what it means that that this is a, because we are talking about a decision problems right this is an s if and only if xk is an s okay that's that's what we mean by equivalent so either along the way the algorithm may actually say no okay so 
you can think of it that way or you can say okay if, if it says no I will produce an x prime k prime which is a trivial no instance for the problem okay. So, just to be consistent with the definition of so this is called a kernel. kernel for this problem. So, clearly um, so if a problem a parameterized problem pi is has a kernel right, pi k then it is FPT right this fixed parameter truck assuming it it is um, ok more precisely I should say if a decision a decidable problem ok that if you have some algorithm for the problem and if in polynomial time I can obtain a kernel then in the kernel go because in equivalent instance go and check whether it is an S instance or not using the decidable algorithm. So, and the overall running time is some polynomial time plus some function of k. So, it makes it FPT ok. But so, you know initially the dis kernelization was a may way of trying to show a problem is FPT ok. And then it turns out people quickly observed that the converse of this is also true that this is actually an equivalent notion of FPT. So, if you can kernelize it, kernelize it and use some brute force algorithm to get an FPT algorithm. Now, conversely, um, if you have a problem which is FPT implies it is kernelizable. It has a surprisingly two line proof. Okay, anybody knows? Hmm? You forgot. Okay, so suppose I have you know your for your problem pi the parameterized problem has an f of k algorithm. Right, it is FPT. Now, what is my goal? I have to spend only polynomial time and produce an equivalent instance whose size is a function of k. Right? Let us call this algorithm A. Now, run A for so on your input x, yeah. So given x comma k your input and the parameter run this algorithm for cardinality of x power c plus 1 steps. Okay. So, this is a polynomial in input size right just pure polynomial. Now, one of two things would have happened. Maybe the algorithm has stopped and given you an answer. Then you you give a trivial kernel, right? So, whatever the answer is, if the algorithm said yes, then you take some trivial S instance of the input, some parameter, and say that is a kernel. Otherwise, give a trivial no instance, right? Is this clear when I say it give a trivial instance? Because suppose uh, you are solving vertex cover and the algorithm comes and says there is no vertex cover of size k, then you just produce this graph and say you know k is my 1 and say give is there a vertex cover of size 1 in this graph, it is a trivial no instance. If it said yes, you can similarly produce a graph with some parameter and gives a trivial s instance. So, if the algorithm stopped else 
what is that why why did the algorithm not stop right because the algorithm is supposed to run on x comma k in this much time right the algorithm if you have given this much time the algorithm would have actually stopped so that means x power c plus 1 cardinal to x power c plus 1 is less than this that is why algorithm has stopped right that is why the algorithm has not stopped right which means cardinality of x is less than f k. So, return x comma k because x itself has size which is a function of k. My goal was to spend polynomial time that is what I did and produce an instance whose size is a function of k. So, now in this case I am not going to produce any new instance original instance because I have argued the original instance size itself is so basically the algorithm would stop unless the original instance is a function of k. Yeah, Meghna seems puzzled. It is uh, if you give me the f of k x to the c algorithm yes I will take that algorithm and yes it is a kernel of size f of k because all I am doing is running that algorithm. Worst case meaning? No, first case, first case. First case yeah it is poly time in both cases because yeah, the, uh, in this case it is polynomial time it actually yeah. stops and gives an answer in this case in polynomial time it gives saying it is yeah. Okay, so, this is useful to know the kernel is a, so, but the, the real interesting question is getting a, so in this case the kernel size is a function of k which is typically exponential in k. So, when does an FPT algorithm have a polynomial sized kernel is another interesting question, right. So, um, like for example, for vertex cover you can come up with a simple 2 power k algorithm for k sized vertex cover using some branching which would give you a applying this canonical theorem uh, kernel of size 2 power k. But we just saw that there is a k square kernel ok. So, within in the FP so you given some parameterized problem is it fixed parameter tractable is one question even if you show it is fixed parameter tractable does it have a polynomial sized kernel is another interesting question ok. Now, we will see later that there is a hardness theory for both there are problems which are not fixed parameter tractable under some complexity theoretic assumption there is a whole hierarchy of complexity classes we will see them. And similarly for problems which are fixed parameter tractable there are problems which cannot have a polynomial sized kernel under some complexity theoretic assumptions. So, there is a hardness theory there also. In fact, I mentioned two books, the second book is on kernelization that has a lot of tools on how to prove something has a polykernel or not having a polykernel. Yeah. So, you mentioned that you want to distinguish between a poly sized kernel and exponential. That is also an interesting question when you have an FPT problem. Yeah. No, k is typically going to be smaller than x. So, I, I can even remove this that is not too much of a problem. So, it is poly in x, but you could ask why am I allowed to spend only poly time? Why do, why do I not spend an FPT time? Okay. Um, that does not make sense for FPT problems because you can actually spend FPT time you actually get the answer and you can get a trivial kernel. So, it is more interesting only if you are allowed only polynomial time. So, another way to think about it is in polynomial time how much compression can I do where you know what small size as a function of k can I get. So, so we will come back to vertex cover and I am going to give you a kernel which is even much smaller than k square ok at least 
in terms of the number of vertices. Okay, questions? So, you know, designing an FPT, so we will see later today uh, different ways of proving some problem is FPT. Kernelization is one way because you reduce the problem size and then you can do brute force, but that is not necessarily always the best way, okay. There are much better ways. But kernelization per se is an interesting question. What sort of a small comparison you can get for the problem, okay. Okay, so let us get back to vertex cover and I want to come up with more rules to reduce the size of the equivalent instance in particular number of vertices. It is known again under some complexity theoretic assumptions that you cannot reduce the kernel size to k power 2 minus epsilon for vertex cover, okay. But that is only talking about the number of edges because of size of the graph. But in terms of vertices, you can bring it down as we will see today later, okay. Okay, so that takes us to this notion of a crown. So the, the idea here is to come up with interesting reduction rules to simply degree 1 rule, degree 2 rule, degree k rule and so on. And this is a generalization of a degree 1 rule. So what is the degree 1 rule? We simply said that if I have a vertex, then you can take this vertex into the solution if you have a degree 1 vertex. But now I am going to define uh, just a combinatorial structure on a graph which is called a crown. So crown decomposition of a graph. is a partition of the vertex set into three parts C, H and R such that the induced subgraph on C is independent. C, C is only, so it is okay, let me draw the picture then you will get, so this is C, this is H and this is the rest. This is how the shape of the partition looks like, the neighborhood of C is contained in H, no vertex of C, C is anything in R and there exists a matching saturate thing H in in the bipartite graph H you know C and whatever. So let me just write so by this what I mean is just look at this H and C, ignore edges inside C, C is anyway independent, ignore edges inside H, look at only these edges. In this bipartite graph, there is a matching that saturates all of H, okay. Such a structure in your graph is called a crown, okay. So why is this useful, right? If I find a crown to solve vertex cover, what can I do? Hmm? Hmm. Pick it into the solution and then other rules will take care of the rest, right? You see that, that if I find a crown, I mean I have to tell you how to find a crown, when can I find a crown and so on. Suppose I find this crown decomposition, then to solve vertex cover, 
I am saying the following, following it is like a degree 1 rule, right? What was the degree 1 rule? It was like this. Then we say, okay, anyway you have to cover this edge and you are better off picking this vertex. So, here there is a matching that saturates all of this in this bipartite graph. So, all these edges need to be covered in the vertex cover. You can pick vertices of C or you can pick vertices of H. The claim is that since no vertex of C sees anything in R, you can pick this and delete and proceed. Okay, This requires a proof, but can be proved, it is not hard. Okay, Because you might pick some vertex of H, some of C to cover these edges, but you can say when if you pick something here, you can push it back to H and R in this. Okay, so so I'm going to say needs to be proved if a crown is found, G can be reduced. by picking H into the solution and deleting what is of H. Now, once you delete what is of H, these guys will become isolated. So, the rule 0 will apply, you will delete them anyway and you will recurse on R. Okay, so just I am going to say this is an exercise but it is pretty routine. Again, you need to go through that if G has a K size solution, if and only if G prime has K minus cardinality of H size solution, right. So, what you get is an equivalent instance. Okay, so now one, how do I find crown, when does it exist? So, here is the theorem G B with no isolated vertices. G B and cardinal B is greater than 3 K then G has a matching of size k plus 1 or a crown and you can find them in polynomial time. So, this is a pure graph theoretic result, it is a very useful thing, it is applicable for a lot of other kernelization. All it says is if you have no isolated vertices and more than 3 k vertices, either you will find a matching of size k plus 1 or you will find a crown. So, if I prove this, what sort of, what can we do for what is called before I get to the proof of it. Suppose I prove this, then what do we get for vertex cover? Hmm? Linear kernel, what, okay. Is that clear? So, if I, so, I take my graph, suppose it has more than 3 k vertices, I run this, either I find a matching of size k plus 1, 
and it is a no instance for k vertex cover because to cover this matching edges I need k plus 1 vertices because the matching is k plus 1 vertex cover size is at least k plus 1. So, it is a no instance for vertex cover or I find a crown. If I find a crown I can apply this and reduce my graph. So, I keep doing this come here find either matching as no or find a crown reduce it find a crown reduce it. When does this stop? when the number of vertices is at most 3 k fine. So, I got a kernel, kernel now with linear number of vertices earlier we had k square it is 3 k vertices now ok. Yeah. Okay. So, let us prove this because it is uh, fairly simple nice proof. Okay, so find a maximum matching in G. Which you can do in polynomial time. Okay, apply any maximum matching algorithm and let us say I have this. And this is the remaining vertices. Okay, or let us call this. What do we know about the remaining vertices? They form a independence. So, let us call this i, let us call this x. So, if the matching size is more than k, then you are done. So, assume it is not right. So, you have at most 2 k vertices here right because the matching size is at most k and this is independent. Now, what I am going to do let us call this step 1. Find again a maximum matching in this bipartite graph x, i and whatever the edges between x and i okay, this is just a notation. So, ignore the edges within x look at this is one part of the bipartition, this is another bi part of the bipartition and look at a maximum matching in this bipartite graph ok. Again if that matching size is more than k we are done ok. So, otherwise what do, what is the situation I have x here and I have i here. So, you can actually also find min vertex cover because it is a bipartite graph maximum matching minimum vertex cover in polynomial time. So, you have case 1 if min vertex cover contains no vertex of i right in this bipartite graph ignoring edges within x i is anyway independent I look at this bipartite graph find the maximum matching. So, it looks like this and in the bipartite graph maximum matching size is equal to minimum vertex cover. So, the minimum vertex cover will pick exactly one vertex from each of the matching edges and suppose the matching min vertex con cover contains contains no vertex of x ok. So, that means it is picking only vertices from here ok. Also this matching size is less than or equal to k because otherwise you would have found a matching of size k plus 1 right. In this case um, then it should contain all vertex of i right 
because can it vomit some vertex of i the maximum matching why not but maybe that is an isolated vertex the graph does not have an isolated vertex right? the graph has no isolated vertices so there must be an edge from here and who is going to cover this edge if you omit this it must be from the other one but we assume that min vertex con contains no vertex of x. So, it should contain all vertices of i and the matching size is at most k which means cardinality of i is at most k which is a contradiction because cardinality of x is at most 2k, cardinality of i is at most k but we assume that vertex set size is more than 3k. So, your min vertex cover should contain some vertices from here. Okay, so what do I want? Uh, Let us call this min vertex cover as S, right? Min vertex cover of this bipolaric. Now I am going to produce your crown, okay? I am going to erase the theorem because I am almost done. I have to just give you a crown now. And the crown is, so here is my x, here is i and here are some vertices, this is s intersection x, right. So, my crown will look like my h is s intersection x, and my c would be there matching partners okay and this is the remaining so this would be matching in i for this let's make sure that the properties of the crown are satisfied well g of c is independent but this is all coming from the independent set anyway so that's independent is a matching that saturates the bipartite graph, yes, here is a matching that saturates every vertex of here. The important thing is that, that there is no, nobody here sees anybody here. Suppose such a thing exists, um, but, but this would be in x, right, because this is in i, a vertex here, so it is neighbor in the bipartite graph must be in x. Who is going to cover th and this x is not in the vertex cover because if it is in the vertex cover you would have picked it here. So, this is not in the vertex cover, this is not in the vertex cover, why not? Because minimum vertex cover picks exactly one from each of the matching edges, so it picked this, so it cannot pick this. So, who is going to cover this edge? Okay. So, Nobody here can see anybody here, which is this. Yeah, okay. So, is that clear? So, modulo proving this theorem that if you can, if you find the crown, you can reduce it. You can apply. So, the proof of this theorem, crown theorem tells you if you have more than 3k vertices, either you will find a large matching and then you will say no instance or you will find a crown which will help you to reduce. Keep doing it and you will stop when you have at most 3k vertices. So, you have a kernel for vertex cover with 3k vertices and some k square edges. Well, it turns out there is even a simpler 
argument for a 2k sized kernel which I will tell you now. But the reason I went through this is this crown theorem is useful because it is a pure graph theoretic theorem which says that if you have more than 3k vertices then either you have a large matching or you can find a crown. Okay, so, the simple 2k kernel vertex kernel for vertex cover is through linear programming or integer programming right. So, we, we know how to model vertex cover as a, an integer linear program right. Have you seen integer linear program? No. Okay. So, let us look at the minimization problem. You want to find minimum vertex cover in a graph. I can write like this right for okay. So, you have g v e for every v in v I create a variable x v. which takes value 0 or 1, 1 means that I am going to include it in the vertex cover, 0 means I am not going to include it in the vertex cover. Then what is that I want to minimize? Summation x v. So, we can write vertex cover as this and what is the constraint? For every edge, one of them has to be 1, okay. And you can write a linear inequality like this, okay. So, this exactly models vertex cover, but it is also an NP complete problem, integer linear program, because we we just reduced vertex cover to this problem anyway. So, in polynomial time, so it is a it is an NP complete problem. But what you can do is if I relax this to allow fractional values, then it becomes a linear program which can be solved in polynomial time, okay. But then it is not really modeling vertex cover because a fractional value of x v means what I have to interpret it somehow, okay. Um, okay. So, I have to use this some black box theorems. So, there is a classical theorem due to Nemhauser and Trotter, which has two parts to it. There exists an optimum solution to integral vertex cover problem that picks all values with 1 in LP and then no value with 0 in LP. Okay. So, what this says is you solve the linear program relaxation which you can do in polynomial time. Now, the linear program solution for the variables could be anything from 0 to 1. So, look at those variables the vertices corresponding to variables where the LP has put 1. You can safely include them in your optimum integral vertex curve and look at all values where the LP have put 0 you can throw them away from your vertex cover. That is what this theorem says. And there is another part, in fact I should have written this first. There exists an LP opt where values are 0, half or 1, okay. So, it is not that it is going to take any fraction between 0 and 1. You can sort of adjust it, take a uh, once you solve the LP, there is an optimum solution where the values are actually 0, half or 1. Okay. So, now let us see how we can use this theorem for to get a kernel for LP, right. So, now what is the problem? You have a graph 
where you want to solve is there a vertex cover of size at most k. Okay. I write the LP relaxation, solve the LP. And if the LP solution produced has value more than k, what can you say? The optimum objective value. Right. So, now let us, so this is pure, this is vertex cover, integer program and linear programming relaxation and this is Nemoza the Trotter theorem. So, this, I mean these theorems are not very hard to prove. In fact, it is, proofs are there in uh, Rolf Niedermeyer's book, but you can also find it in some, any vertex cover matching books. So I, I saw, so I take my graph where I am interested in finding k size vertex cover, write the LP relaxation and solve it in polynomial time. Suppose the objective value of the LP relaxation is more than k, then what can you say? Or in other words, what can you say about the LP opt and cardinality of min vertex cover? Right? This is the relaxation, this is the integer programming solution. What is the relationship between them? What is greater? Okay, so it is like this. Why? Yeah, so in particular, a solution here is also a solution here. Right. So, anything which optimizes minimum vertex cover, it is a 0, 1 value that also satisfies this, but with the relaxation you might get some smaller value. But when you solve the LP and if this happens to be greater than k, then you know that vertex cover will be greater than k, so it is a no instance, right. So, let us assume that my LP opt which is summation x v star whatever the optimum value is less than or equal to k. Okay. Now, Nemozer Trotter theorem says that hey go to the LP opt which is put 0 half 1, collect all the guys which are 1, collect all the guys which are 0, you know take the ones and delete them, you can safely include it in your vertex cover, zeros you can delete them and work on the remaining. Now, let us look at how many vertices can there be in the remaining. What is the LP value for those vertices? Half, but the overall sum is at most k. So, how many can there be? 2 k and that is a kernel. Right. So, LP equal to half is at most 2 k. So, look at the induced subgraph on those vertices and that is a kernel for it because now in this you have to look for a vertex cover of size k minus whatever you have picked in the solution which is all the ones. Okay. So, that is this is a, um, so from g k you got to a g prime k prime where g prime is all vertices. So, induced subgraph that got LP value half and k prime is k minus number of LP value 1 vertices because that those you have picked into the solution. Sorry? What is the existence proof? All these are algorithmic. These, these two are, you can make them into algorithm. So, solve the LP. LP gives you some fraction values. You can adjust them, you know, put some plus epsilon, minus epsilons here and there and make them 0, half 1 to get this. And once you get this, this is you know, you are going to pick all the 1s and zeros, and then you have the remaining graph that is a kernel. So, this is, I mean this is algorithmic. Yeah, 
exactly. On the remaining induced subgraph on vertices which got half, you are looking for a vertex cover of size k minus this. Okay. And maybe later we will see a kernel which is slightly better than this 2k minus log k or something. Um, but this is number of vertices. Okay. Okay. So, just to summarize what we did and then I am going to give you some 2-3 problems. So, what we did was first of all we saw the different ways of parameterizing, right. One was distance from an easy class of graphs was as a parameter um, where we showed its FPT for vertex cover and then, um, then we just delved deeper into the notion of kernelization and we saw kernel for vertex cover, the first kernel where you just pick the high degree rule, it is called bus kernel because it was due to Samuel bus in I mean it is very hard to find a reference for it because it is it is in one page of some other paper. Um, so, some often it is referred to as bus kernel where you just pick the high degree vertices, the vertices with degree more than k into the solution and then what is left is a k square kernel that is all more or less. And then using this crown in fact okay, a nice exercise is find the crown from LP opt solution. In fact, this is also a crown. If you look at the LP values 0 half 1, right? The zeros are independent. So, you can you can take the zeros and they form your C, the ones will form your H and the remaining half will form the remaining and you can argue that that is actually a crown. Okay, zeros are independent is easy because of the LP constraint. Zero cannot see a half vertex because of the LP constraint. So where you need to do a bit of work is to show that there is a matching that saturates the ones in the one zero bipartite graph. Okay, so so there is you know there is a rich combinatorial structures, crown matching, all of them play a role in many such problems that makes the whole thing very interesting. Okay, so let me just give some yeah, so let us look at graph coloring, right. K coloring, right. So, can you color the graph with K colors? K is 1 or 2 is easy, but K greater than or equal to 3. Um, what happens if I use K as the parameter? Can I get an FPT algorithm? Why not? Very nice because 3 coloring. So, if I get an F of K n to the c algorithm implies n to the c algorithm when k equal to 3 because this is a constant, right. But we know that that is unlikely because 3 coloring itself is np hat. In fact, not even f of k n to the c algorithm, you cannot even get an n to the g of k algorithm, right. Even if I allow a function of k and the exponent even that is unlikely for the same reason because when you put k equal to 3 it is just polynomial term okay. So, so this brings me back to the point I made about what is a parameter right. It need not be the solution size just make up whatever is interesting right. So, for example, let me ask um, this question can we color with n minus k colors 
properly color right so this is same as asking can i save k colors trivially you can color a graph on n vertices properly using n colors but now i am asking can you save some k colors give a kernel so k is the parameter okay so it's not the solution size it is not how many colors you use which is the parameter how many colors you save is the parameter okay so using crowns okay let's look at the max sad problem okay it's a non graph problem you are given a cnf formula on n variables and you want to satisfy at least k clauses right So this is here k is the solution size okay do you know anything here i mean some simple observations m by 2 m is a number of clauses you can always satisfy half the clauses right so if k is smaller than m by 2 it's truly really yes okay given any cnf formula on m clauses and n variables there is an assignment that will satisfy at least m by 2 clauses in fact you can prove it probabilistically or you can say that i take an assignment if that doesn't satisfy half the clauses i flip every variable you can argue that okay so if k is smaller than m by 2 the answer is trivially yes so k is larger than m by 2 which means m is at most 2k which looks like a kernel but that's only for m but n can be very large so that's a starting point give a kernel using again crown so also for n right because for m it's trivial number of variables and in fact all the answers are there in in the book or the videos or somewhere so you think about them and then maybe you guys can sit together and discuss whatever you come up with okay the third thing is about d hitting set okay so what is the hitting set problem you are given a family you are given a universe and a family of subsets of the universe and what you are looking for is is there a subset of the universe that intersects every set in the family so you have a universe and then a family which is some f1 f2 fm each fi is some subset of x and some parameter k and the question is does there exist a subset of u of size at most k such that s intersection f is non empty for all f in the family okay this is a generalization of vertex curve why yeah what is the universe what is the set of edges is the family what is the universe what is the universe
set of all vertices. Hmm. So, take u as the set of all vertices and your family would be the endpoints of the two element subsets, right. So, if I now say that some each f i is d which is greater than or equal to 2, let us fix d. Then what can you do? Whatever we did for vertex cover, we can generalize for this d, okay. So, I am just going to say yeah, obtain a kernel so you can okay the try try starting with the bus kernel the k square kernel we saw with the crown gets difficult the lp um, they are hard so you can say something like k power d size okay so here there is a again a nice combinatorial lemma called sunflower lemma which is useful um, basically it says that if your family size is large what you have is what is called a sunflower which is a core and then you know there is a collection of sets where they which have a common intersection Okay. So, if, if the sunflower has a lot of petals, then you have to take the core to cover to hit all these sets because otherwise you have to pick one from each of the others. It is very similar to the bus kernel. You can apply sunflower lemma and you know and do some reductions to get some. Again, I, I do not necessarily want you to think, I mean you, up to you, but it is also there in the books and the videos so you can check them out. So, So, here the parameter is k, I mean parameter always by default in this course will be k. Um, so, one nice thing about this is um, So, d heating set, gen, um, so you can think of um, as you said d heating set generalizes vertex cover because your sets are edges. Now, let us think of the question like can I delete k vertices to get a split graph in my graph, okay. So, given an arbitrary graph are there k vertices whose deletion results in a what is called a split graph. If you know what a split graph is fine otherwise do not worry. Now, what we know is split graphs have some finite number of uh, obstruction sets, right. A split graph cannot contain the following four graphs or something. So, then everything boils down to in your graph you find all those obstructions and you have to hit them, right. So, it is same as asking can you have a k sized k vertices who, which will hit each of this because then if you hit them you delete them then what is having what you have is a um, split graph. So, many of this where so let me leave it at that we can come back. So, pi deletion to or deletion to a class of graphs with finite forbidden set. Infinite is a different ball game. If you have a, if this class of graphs is finite number of obstruction sets, then you can model this deletion problem as a hitting set problem. That is all I am saying. Because you want to find k vertices whose deletion results in this class that means whatever the obstructions are you want to hit them. So, find all the obstructions in your graph, write it as a hitting set, use this kernel and then you can give an FPT algorithm for such things for such class of graphs, okay. We can look at them in detail next time maybe, okay. So, I will stop here.